Jerry, it's me. What's up, Michael? Everything seems to be fine, except the lights don't work. Oh, you don't have to worry. I forgot to tell you. I had an electrician, one that I trust, to meet you there this morning. You know how a lack of power can be a recurring issue in old places like that. He should be arriving soon. That's good to know. I'll set up my stuff and let you know how everything does later. Perfect. Have fun. Sure. Jerry, it's me. What's up, Michael? Do you know anything about the previous inhabitants of this house? Not much. Just there were some strange individuals. There's also the murder. You're kidding me. A murder? An old-fashioned murder. You'd probably love the details, but sadly I don't know very much. It's old history, really. Although it caused quite a stir there in Rothbury. It seems the owner, James Blackwood, I think, went mad and killed his wife. I do remember the date, though. May, 1963. James. James Blackwood, according to the stuff I've been reading. Oh, so you're already turning the place upside down? I should have thought so. There's enough material for a whole series of stories here, you know. After you finish your book, my friend. Yeah, yeah. But it can never hurt poking around a little. Would you just get back to work? Call me if you need anything. All right. Goodbye. Jerry, it's me. What's up, Michael? I found a safe box in the room upstairs. Would you happen to know the combination? I think I should. Let me see. Hmm. I did take note of the combination once, but I don't have it here right now. I'll give it to you tomorrow. Okay? Great. Thanks. They productions? What in heaven's name was that? Oh, hi, boss. I was just fooling around. Well, don't. I don't want people thinking I'm some kind of studio. And don't call me boss. I'm sorry. It's just that no one was calling, and all of a sudden I got excited. I told you it was going to be that way, girl. But I still need you there. I just hope you're not being bored to death. Oh, don't worry. I'm studying tongues during my spare time. I love that so much. That's great, but don't lower your guard. As soon as I publish my new book, that place is going to get riddled with phone calls and hundreds of fan mail. That's the spirit, boss. I know your new book's going to be a huge success. Of course it will. <clears throat> as soon as I find a proper ending. And stop calling me boss. As you wish, boss. Oh, sorry. Thanks. Goodbye. Good luck. It's me, Bobby, dear. I need to ask you a favor. Bring it on. I found a letter here, and I'm curious about it. It's in Italian. Do you think you could translate it for me? Why, Mr. Athwaite, are we being naughty? Mrs. Stiles. Yes, yes, of course I can. Just send me the letter, and I'll put hands to work as soon as I have it here. Excellent. Hmm. I wonder if the postman will come by. I feel like I'm the last person alive on the whole planet here. But Yes, Jerry did. I just hope they don't forget about me, that's all. In any case, thank you. You're such a dear. That's what I'm here for. Actually, that's what I'm paying you for. Anyway, I'll go and try mailing that letter. I'll be standing by for action. Thanks. Goodbye.
sense of adventuring back in London, thanks. I have work to do. Then do it. What else could you ask for? 
may have the chance to experience firsthand one of your period pieces. Oh, very funny. Try getting that guy over here as soon as possible. Don't worry, I will. Make sure you find some candles before it gets too dark. Yes, candles. Bye. Nothing. No candles. All right. Listen. The town isn't too far away. No more than 20 minutes drive. If you can't find some candles there, I'll eat my hat. You'll eat your whole closet. This is getting on my nerves. Come on. It's just a quick ride. You know how to get there? Yeah, I saw it on my way here. Did you call Mr. Busy Electrician who couldn't hold on for just five more minutes? Yes. He'll be doing me another special favor and will be going there tomorrow afternoon. It's the best he can do. You have to bear in mind it's Sunday. We'll charge extra, of course. I don't care. I have no power. I'll get him myself if he doesn't show up. Calm down. Drive to the town before it gets too dark. You won't be able to find your way back if it does. Yeah, I had to buy some food anyway. There you go. Godspeed. And drive safe. Insane. My car is dead. What? Are you sure? Have you checked its pulse? I'm not joking. It's gone. My friend, this completely redefines the term suspension of disbelief you sometimes use for your stories. I know. I'm speechless. I forgot the lights on and the car ran out of batteries. All because of that bloody fog. Jerry, you've got to help me. Get over here. right now. But Jerry, I can't spend the whole night without one single source of light. I barely know this place and I won't be able to find my way. Heck, I don't even know if it's rid of ghosts yet. Are you a sleepwalker, Michael? You lie down on the bed, you sleep, you wake up, and you'll have tons of bright light then. That's not helping. And you're the one who got me into this mess in the first place. Hold on a minute. It's not my fault if the electrician missed you for a few minutes. There aren't any candles in a three-story mansion, and your car's battery was low. Okay, okay, listen. When will you be coming back to Rothbury? I'll be arriving home early tomorrow morning, and I'll come for you shortly after. We'll drive to town, stock yourself up, and then spend the rest of the day in your garden, drinking some beers while we wait for Mr. Electrician. Sounds like a plan? Yeah, I guess. And I don't think there's any plan B either. I'm afraid not. Sorry. I really took all the precautions to make your stay there as comfortable as possible. But I guess sometimes things are just meant to go wrong. Apparently. All right. I'll be on my way then. Call me back if you need anything. And Michael. Yes? Just don't let this situation get on your nerves. 
I promise it won't. Goodbye. <laughs>